Corporation, Heather. That's board. Green light, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket. We enforce it. And at the end of the day, each and every man is to go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back on this April 25th, 2017. We actually haven't done a show in about a month. Um, I'm still working on different things and and how uh, we're going to do the schedule going forward and things like that. So I apologize, but um, I wanted to do a show today. I got a lot to talk about or that I wanted to talk about. So I thought I would uh, do something. I've just been totally exhausted and it's you know a lot of other stuff as well so um thank you for uh tuning in to nonpartisan liberty for all we are coming to you live from las vegas on the nonpartisan liberty for all media and radio network which even though we haven't been doing any live shows, we still run 24-7, and you can listen to the live stream on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com and to the archives, including the new ones immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty For All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want. As long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. We, of course, are always happy to hear from you. You can call via phone at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664 or via Skype at nonpartisan liberty for all dot com that's nonpartisan liberty for all dot com and if you forget the number or the Skype name just go to law nonpartisan liberty for all dot com and you can get all of our contact information as well as original articles and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I, one of the reasons why uh, I was actually going to do some shows next week, again, I'm not sure. I'm not ending the show. Um, I kind of just took another hiatus, and, and that, I think, at least until maybe July or August, I'm not sure how many shows... I'm going to end up doing, uh, I didn't really plan on taking that long, uh, to do another show because I think the last show we did was about a month ago. Um, so that wasn't the plan, but just kind of ended up being that way. Um, there's just a lot of time that goes into preparation and, um, all of the other things involved with the show, the, you know, pressure of wanting to put on a good show and put on something that people want to listen to. And it, we were doing, I I think really well for a while. And of course, you know, we have our, our ups and downs and whatnot as far as, listeners go and 
it seemed to recently at least, and that's probably because I took a, like a month off where we weren't getting as many, basically no live listens. I mean, we were still getting downloads, but not as many as I had hoped. And I just, it's hard to really be into everything surrounding the show when you feel like, you know, nobody gives a fuck anyway. And I and I don't mean like I take that personally, like nobody gives a fuck when it comes to me. I mean more about the things that are going on, that people are just uh, not even unaware. Um, it, it just, they just don't give a fuck. And it's very discouraging and, and, and it can be frustrating as well. And at the same time, I got to make sure I do the best show possible. And it's harder to do a show by yourself, although I've gotten used to it, than when you have co-hosts and you have a lot of people calling in and things like that. And I kind of got to a point where I, I got sick of trying to find people because when you're not paying somebody and they got to take time out of their schedule and they got to do some research and things like that, it's kind of hard to, and, and of course, have the same ideas at the same time that you have. I mean, it's hard to find and I kind of got sick of just asking people and people saying, Oh yeah, I'll do it. Or, um, you know, saying that they'd at least, um, come on the show, which originally I really didn't have that problem as far as people coming on the show, but just people saying they would co-host or whatever, and then not doing it. And it's just, it, it got to a point where I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do this no matter what. I'm not going to let anybody stop me or hold me back or whatever. And now I'm kind of, I don't know that I'm, I'm letting other people, it, no no one else is stopping me or holding, holding me back or anything like that, except really, I think, myself at this point. And if I don't get on the air and I'm not enthusiastic about it and I'm not doing it uh, the best I can do or, uh, giving it the best effort I think that I can. And it's like, you know, I only have a certain amount of people listening, uh, anyway, live, which is, you know, a very low number. It's not like people are waiting for the show to come on at that time so they can listen to it. They're listening later if they're listening to the show. And so I kind of looked at it that way. I have, this will be the hundredth and eightieth show. So there's so many out there and I am playing 24 uh, seven old shows as well. So there's so many ideas that I can play that I can still get across and it's still r- r- always running and people can always listen to it. And I haven't been that good about changing it. I think I've been running the same 30 shows for like (laughs) a month or two now. But, I mean, to listen to those 30 shows, you'd have to listen like three days straight or something like that. So, But anyway, I I need to get in there and either add more to the – it's like a loop um, or change it up, which I was doing before – but we'll probably have a shorter show today. Uh, but I did just want to, I've been away for a month from the show and I wanted to do something. And it's just so many things that I'm thinking about. I'm just lacking, I think, in organizing my thoughts and and, and pushing myself to to do it, uh, really. 
and it's not even being lazy. It's just not having the energy um, to do it and to put the time in and to, you know, when I come home from work and it's, it's tiring. It really is. But then I'm sitting there thinking um, to myself, you know, about all these things that are going on that I could talk about, you know, um, or that I'm, I want to talk about. And a lot of them, especially recently have been about police. So that's what we're going to talk about again today. I know we've done so many shows about police, but I, I don't think we can do enough when it comes to the police because there's so many different aspects, number one. And number two, it, it doesn't matter. It, it seems to not matter how many shows you do. Um, it or how many sh- shows you do about the police. It just people just don't get it. Um it's like, you know, they continue to support the police. And I talked about how Black Lives Matter, I think, caused a lot of damage in the, uh, I guess, opinion on police because it turned into a total racial thing. And I... It's like people, I I don't know, at least media did that. So the people that actually follow government media and pay attention to them and base their conversations and their, uh, I don't want to say their life on the news, but that they watch the news every night, their opinions were probably affected. I mean, but how many people is that anyway? Um, you know, there are a certain amount of people, but I think of course the, the, the people that, uh, truly care about what's going on and that people of all races are being affected by the police. And that's not even really what is about it's it's about the power and 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 the structure and and i'm going to talk about some of those things tonight and the what it comes down to is the abuse of freedom and living in a police state and i've always said this that i do look at the police as a racist organization and I mean, they even show that themselves. I've talked about, I did a couple of shows about the show uh, Cops. And I mean, and I got more to say about that. I, I mean, you got to look at this show as totally biased, number one, meaning that they control the content. So they're not going to show you all the bad stuff that they do or that they consider bad because they're showing you all this fucked up shit. And if you don't think it's fucked up, then, you know, and a lot of people don't, and that's the one of the problems and we'll get to that. But this is the best of what they supposedly do because you know that they're not going to allow um, people to broadcast them if I mean the show's been on since nineteen nine eighty nine, so they're not going to allow uh, people to broadcast them and sit in with all these different police departments if they're uh, not getting the final approval or or something, or if they're going to sh- make them look bad or anything like that. So they're showing. St- a lot of stuff that does fucking make them look bad. And you know that all these situations where 
they show people. So, for example, you know, a lot of times they'll pull people over for a traffic stop, turn it into a search right away. You know, they're they're trying to ask questions. They're trying to search them. They're trying to whatever. You know that. How many people did they do that to that didn't have anything, but they harassed them anyway and searched their car and, you know, you know that there are probably the majority of people that that's what happened, but they only show the people that actually have drugs on them. And even in those situations, they look like fucking assholes that are just totally violating people's rights. And and we're not just even talking about cops here and and that, you know, if on your own show that you have approval over that, you know, you're being videotaped and this is being and I, I I've noticed edits where you can see even within a show where they edited a section of a of a incident out like purposely some like something happened that they edited it out. And I've been watching a lot of those, uh, you know, a lot of shows. I mean, I've probably seen, fuck, like 50, 100. And then, of course, you got all the videos on the Internet, and there's tons of them. And I've seen so many, and it ain't even funny. Not to mention, of course, my experience with the police. I mean, I would say that when it comes to police and how they treat people, that I have a pretty good... um, I not idea, but I know what's going on there. It's it's not, and you know it's not hard to figure out neither. But I've seen enough personally, and you know what they present. the The problem, of course, is is just like government. There's all this stuff that goes on that you can't prove that you don't know about because they're going to hide it. They're going to give their version of the story and whatever. And just like to show cops, they're going to only show you what they want you to see. And they try to do things like the one thing that they they do. I mean, they look totally fucked up and like they're violating people's rights even on the show. And I was talking about that when I did the the shows on cops. cops but they try to do when they you could tell when they become conscious of the camera so like after they arrest somebody you take somebody who ran from them who they had to jump on and whatever and you know knowing how cops are in general they're not gonna uh sit there and joke around with the person about it and whatever after they catch them most likely they're going to fucking hit them or fucking, you know, call them a piece of shit or whatever. But, you know, the, that's the one part where they, they're like, oh, shit. You know, they become conscious of the camera and they, of course, they show those parts. Um, anytime a cop does anything remotely uh, what you would consider... Or, or the average person would consider nice because I, I don't consider this nice because they have no right to search you in the first place. It's like somebody punching you in the face and you thanking them because they didn't beat you up. I mean, that's the the type of thing. So like people, I, there was some girl who they had no, who was just standing uh, during the day on the sidewalk and, they ended up searching her and they, I think all they found was a pipe. And this is a ridiculous law too, that paraphernalia, I guess, depending on the state is illegal. Now in Nevada, I think that now, uh, cannabis is legal because of the, I don't know because I haven't really looked into it. Just cause I don't smoke cannabis, although I think it's important um, that it is legal. And I, I just assumed it was uh, because of the ballot measure I thought went into effect January 1st. So I don't know if the the specific restrictions or whatever um, 
if it's like, oh, if you have more than an ounce or you have it, you know, how it applies to if you're selling it or whatever. Because obviously, well, that's not true. I was going to say, obviously, if you have it, you know, you must have bought it from somebody, but you can grow your own. But I need that's something I do need to look more into. Um, So I would assume then paraphernalia would not be something that you could be arrested for if uh, cannabis is illegal because any pipe, well, I guess unless it's a glass, you know, I don't know about people smoking marijuana in a glass fucking pipe. So, but all those other pipes, um, you know, I know Tommy Chong went to jail for like six months for selling bongs and shit and most people know that but the i I have so many issues with the police it's it's not even funny and i don't mean when i say that what i mean is the institution of policing the setup of the police now first of all i don't think they should exist period you can go to my facebook page and the government police um, which when it comes to getting more likes, that's doing better than any of my social media pages, even though I have less than my other pages. I keep losing likes on the official show, the nonpartisan Liberty for all the official Facebook, uh, page. I'm like losing people every day. <laughs> I think I got to four thirty. Um, which is not a a lot compared to, you know, so many people. I mean, a lot of people have more friends than that, you know, five times as, you know, many friends as that. But I, um, got to that and it, it, you know, it rose to that and it kept rising and rising. And then after that, it dropped and now it's at like 416 and And, and at this point I'm just, uh, you know, as I talked about in the beginning, it's just like, whatever. I, I, I'm, I need to get back to that point where I really, it, it maybe it's just that discouragement that I, I feel. I mean, the show's been on three years, although this year I took a couple, uh, I guess hiatuses from the show um, this year and definitely have done the least amount of shows uh, this year compared to any other year. I mean, the first year I, it was crazy um, the amount of shows I did. And even in the, in 2014, even in 2015 and then 2016, I still did a lot of shows, but you know, had cut down and then uh this year actually so that would be yeah 3 years and yeah so um it would be 3 years this month so it's you know it it's not that i don't enjoy doing this it's it's weird that I haven't done, I haven't done it in a month and I'm like, fuck, this is weird. Like I haven't, you know, I enjoy doing this. I do. And, you know, it's weird that I haven't done it for a while and it is something that I'm into and, you know, I would look forward to it was just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. But anyways, back to the the police. So I was saying there, there's so many issues I have with them, even if I believed that there should be police. Now, just to clarify again, for the people that don't know, I never said I don't believe in safety or I don't believe in protection. I just don't believe, one, it should be supplied by the government, and they should have a monopoly on force. And two, 
that it should be uh, forced upon you by people who have rights that you don't have. Which the police obviously have all these rights that regular people do not have, which is a problem. And that kind of, you know, everything kind of flows from there where you have an organization that not only, quote unquote, enforces laws, which is a whole nother issue in itself, because we've talked about the business of laws, politicians, how politicians are judged that. If they don't introduce bills in Congress, they're thought of as, you know, shitty congressmen. Really? I mean, I've brought this up before. How many laws as the country goes on and on? If you're not repealing bills. And I don't think anybody has ever brought this up to go back and look at and it, you're getting to a point where it, it probably would be impossible. I mean, you really need to go back. And now I don't believe in government period, but assuming you do. And, and people still don't get that. I don't know. And I don't get why people believe in government. I, I, I see these people criticize the shit out of government. Talk about how corrupt things are. I see uh, former FBI agents, former CIA, Alex Jones, who's blowing fucking Donald Trump. Or might as well be. I see these people. And they still want government, though. They'll talk about how bad it is, how corrupt it is, how whatever. They think that if you get the right person in there, no matter how, I mean, how long this goes on of we we know it's an oligarchy and they'll even say that. And but no, we need a government. This is my main issue with why there cannot be a government. One. I mean, there's a couple issues. There's, of course, consent. You cannot. Get the majority consent. You cannot force people to do things that they don't want to do just because the majority wants them. Like rob them, extort money from them, taxes. I mean, they do it anyway, but it's wrong. It's theft. It's it's extor- it's 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 worse than theft. It's extortion. At least theft is, you know, stealing some shit and then leaving. You know, like somebody fucking breaks into your house and steals something and leaves or breaks into your car and steals something and leaves or, you know what I mean? That's, you don't really have, uh, a, somebody threatening you um the bodily harm the threat to your life the threat to your free freedom it's just fuck you weren't there to stop them if you're just talking about regular theft so the taxation is theft which it is but it's more than that i think doesn't do it justice because it's it goes it's not theft it's extortion which is worse because extortion means that it's not only theft it's not only that I'm going to take from you but I'm telling you that you're going to give me it, it's it's more degrading first of all and it's you're going to give this to me and if you don't fucking give this to me I'm going to take away your freedom. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. Whatever. That's extortion. So to say taxation is theft, and it's good that people say that, but it doesn't do it justice. But anyway, you... 
have one of the issues, of course, is consent because you'd have to have everybody consent to every law. And then how do you deal with you're constantly having people born? And how do you deal with them? And of course, you know, okay, when they're an infant and they can't fucking talk. But, you know, the, the 18 as a voting age is not fair, first of all. It, kids are treated very badly. Um, or not that they're treated very badly. They can be. But they are, when it comes to rights, they are at the bottom of society. And because they have no rights whatsoever. They not only don't have, uh, have to obey parents, they have to obey the government. And the government puts more restrictions on you based on your age. And it's just, it's crazy. And that's something most people once they turn 18 or really once they turn 21 and get older, start to get more into their twenties or even thirties, um, probably twenties, they don't give a fuck anymore because it doesn't affect them. But that's something that I will never forget about because not only is it damaging, it can be, depending on, you know, who your parents are, but that whole not having free, I mean, it, it's just, it's not right, but we'll talk a little actually about that. Um, and how the government is, of course, as we've talked about before, taking more control over your, uh, kids. And one thing on that real quick, like I was watching this video and there was a court case where a kid was being taken to church like three times a week or something. And he didn't want to go. And he was like 13, either 12 or 13. I think at 12 or 13, you can easily make that decision. You're not talking about a two-year-old or something. And this is where I I get, you know, confused isn't the word, but I I get kind of or question, like, when do you, you don't want, if like, I don't want government interfering and I don't want age limits on things, but of course I don't want fucking, you know, pedophiles raping little kids neither. So, you know, at what point do you say, okay, this is your decision or that is your decision? I definitely think teenagers, uh, although I know the majority of people disagree with me, I believe they can make their own decisions and I'm sorry, they're people. I mean, people used to get married when they were 13, 14. So, you know, if you can comprehend the decision, if you can comprehend the concept of freedom, I don't know that you should be deprived of it. And that's a whole nother issue, but definitely teenagers have, I believe have the right to do what they want. And, and especially when you have fucking parents that if their kid talks back to them and they punish them or hit them or whatever, like what the fuck is that shit? As far as I'm concerned, You know, your kid has a right to an opinion. You made a choice to have a fucking kid. And you, again, I I talked recently um, and a while ago as well, is that there's selfish reasons in people having kids because they get stuff out of it too. And I don't mean that's a bad thing, but they, you know, get 
whatever out of it. They get love or they get, you know, the, I, I would assume for most people, love is something that they, maybe they don't get it later, but that is one of the reasons and they want a family and people to take care of or whatever to pass their genes on. They're getting something out of it. It might not be what they wanted because, you know, relationships might go bad when they're a teenager or whatever, but um, they have kids with that intent. And, you know, you don't have to have kids neither. Um, although when it comes to guys, you kind of do if you get a girl pregnant, I guess. But um, that's where guys need to be more careful in general. But that's a whole other issue as well. So the kid didn't want to go to church three times a week. And I guess in the state, and I can't remember the state, they have some kind of court where the government intervened because the kid was able to get the government involved somehow, like call, I don't know if it was like CPS or the police or whatever, to get them involved and kind of like take it to court and have a judge decide. And people are saying, oh, look, the government, you know, is getting we can raise our kids how we want and the government's getting involved. And I don't like the fact that the government I don't agree with that because the government is getting involved. However, I don't agree with the parents neither. If the kid doesn't want to fucking go to church at 12 then he shouldn't have to go to church. Personally, I think if you're taking your kid any religion before they can comprehend what it is, that's indoctrination. It is. And people will want to deny it and they'll look at it as positive indoctrination. I don't. And it's... There, there's so many things I have to say about, you know, religion, but it's, I don't want to get into a whole nother thing here. But the point being is that I believe the kid has the right to decide. Now, what really should happen is there shouldn't be a law that prohibits the kid from making that decision in the first place. Government should stay out of it altogether. Not that you have to go and get government's fucking permission. So then the government gets involved in your life. That's like playing with fire right there. If you're a kid and you go get the government in your life. And if you're the parents and you're like, fuck, now we got to deal with this shit. Um, it's fucked up on so many levels on both sides, but my point is there should be no government intervention. The parents shouldn't be able to, uh, force a kid to go to church period. Sorry. I guess if it's a little kid and you know, whatever, but I think that's wrong. Um, but a, a 12, 13 year old kid, a teenager, but on the other side of that, you have government getting more involved in, of course, kids' lives. And we know all about, you know, CPS and all the shit that they do. And I'm going to talk a little about that. There's something they want to add to the Homeland Security Bill that specifically mentions kids. And I'm going to talk about that as well. And all the kids that have been arrested or brought back home or parents that have been arrested because they let their kids go to the park at nine years old by themselves and all this ridiculousness. So that, you know, is where I, I agree with the, the parents. Um, I don't agree with the parents on the church thing, but I don't agree with the whole setup of government being involved period so but that's another 
issue there, but it, this 18 is just an arbitrary number. I, I just, it it's a hard thing to really say, but really you, I think that bottom line is you have no restrictions based on age. And I know that sounds shocking, but because what, what I'm saying is they'll work themselves out if it was like that. Like your five-year-old is not going to run away and, you know, live on their own. I mean, they'll – because there's things like that that come into it. It's – and I, I don't know because I don't know any other way really around that where – you have government stay out of it, but you don't deprive kids of their freedom because I don't believe that parents own, you don't own your kids. They're people. I'm sorry. Now, when they're an infant and they can't fucking talk, you know, you don't own them, but like you're taking care of them. You make the decisions because they can't comprehend and even if they can, they cannot vocalize that. And, you know, even toddlers and, you know, little kids. But kids are a lot smarter than you think. I mean, 10-year-old, 9-, 8-year-old kids. Um, Of course, the thing, the main concern is always the, you know, the the fucking pedophiles or adults trying to take advantage of your kids. But if you're a good parent, see, this is where parenting, I think, come totally comes in. And just being a good parent and being there and, and building a relationship and trust with your kid. Now that's not going to stop people that, you know, rapist and people that force you know, your kids to do things. And I don't even want to think about that. But what my point being is that they will most likely not end up even in those situations. Not to say that kids that have ended up in those situations, it's their fault because it's not. But there's certain situations that maybe if the parents talk to the kid could have been avoided where the kid felt or didn't know. I'm I'm just thinking of, I've been doing a lot of research on, and I'll probably do a show on it. Like, you know, the supposed Hollywood pedophile rings and the Satanism cults that are in the pedophilia and whatever. And, you know, I don't know about the Satanism part. I've listened to a lot of stuff. Everyone's like, this is proof. This is whatever. I don't know about the Satanism part or the eyes wide shut type stuff. Um, That seems more likely to be honest. It's sex stuff and whatever. And, and pedophile rings it, that, I mean, has been proven in society in general, but more in uh, Hollywood is what I'm talking about. And I've heard stories in these documentaries from kids that kind of felt that weren't even forced. They weren't forced to do something, but they felt like it's like they were, I, I don't know. So, but again, that's kind of a whole nother uh, issue there, but I did want to talk a little about, you know, kids freedoms. So that's why I'm kind of getting into that. But, but yeah, I mean, I think that being, you know, and this is just my opinion, of course, but I don't believe you own your kids. And I think letting them do what they want, but being, very involved in their lives and building a relationship of trust and all of that stuff. Because if they know, I mean, there's so many things we could go into about this, but I, 
you know, I'll just say quickly, I mean, if they know that they can trust you, you know, they're going to talk to you about everything. They're going to uh, confide in you. They're, you're going to have a totally different relationship than if they think that they can. And, you know, they are people. Just because they're kids doesn't mean they're people. And just because you let them do what they want doesn't mean you're not parenting. If you just let them do what they want and like you're not involved in their life and they're really just, hey, and they just whatever. That's not, you know, being a parent. Because I think you have to be more involved in their life. And there's, you know, parenting philosophies and, and parents out there that do it. And we've had them on the show that, you know, the not free range parents because they're not. Um, they're just more they let their kids go out, but more the, you know, they don't discipline their kids. They let their kids stay up as long as they want and pretty much do what they want. And. At the same time, though, they're more involved than the parents that are disciplining their kids all the time and setting all these limits and whatever. And then they say, well, because when you get out in the real world, well, the the real world is fucked up because it's wrong. And that's where, the, you know, cops come in where you should be able to do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Or, you know, their property. But government wants to take over as the parent. And, of course, the enforcers are the cops. So all of these uh, cops, and before that I was mentioning government, um, you know, besides the consent um, regarding government, one of the things is that Govern. If you give people power over you, they will always try to take more. So, even if somehow you got past the consent thing, which I don't think you can get past that either, because you can't get everybody to consent to just, you know, you're consenting to things that you don't know. That's not consent. This social contract bullshit. This implied consent. Because you were born here and you happen to live here. Well, I'd fucking leave in two seconds if I could go somewhere that was actually free. But governments have taken over the whole world, which are gangs. Gangs have taken over the whole world. And it's just, you know, which gang is worse than which. And really, the U.S. government, and I've said this before, it's because the the amount of power they have is one of the worst gangs or is the worst gang, I think, in the world or worst mafia, whatever you want to call them, um, to other countries. But it didn't seem like they were to their own, to the people that lived in the U.S. Now they're getting to be when it comes to police now you can go and just not have any interactions with police by chance and everything can seem really free but just because they don't have enough police or they don't have the resources yet and i think they will at some point um especially with the technology doesn't mean that, I mean, they're still violating your rights anyway. You're just, you know, oblivious to it or you don't think about it because they're collecting all the data on you. But it's it's getting to one of the worst countries when it comes to freedom. Now, I can't really say... You know, and then they they give you this bullshit about America's greatest country in the world and whatever. And, well, would you want to be over in this country? And and, and, you know what? I haven't lived in any other country. And even the people that have, if you haven't lived there, like, as, as a normal person for at least a year, I mean, 
you can't really say that much. If you went on vacation somewhere, that doesn't really count because tourists are going to treat differently. If you were in the military and you lived in another country, you're going to be treated differently. If you actually lived in another country, you know, for a year or a couple years or, or whatever, then I think you can make a comparison that way. Um, really, all these people that say America is the greatest country in the world, it, you're, that's what you're being told by the United States government. Now, I could say that police-wise, I mean, other countries, from what I hear, when it comes to police... In certain countries, it depends on the country, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's some places where you'll be executed for having drugs. I mean, it's, let's not, you know, get crazy here and say, oh, well, you know, America's terrible and all these countries are great. No, they all have governments. They're all fucked up. All of them are fucked up because they have governments as far as I'm concerned. And there's levels of freedom. I mean... But the level of freedom in the United States is just continuing to drop, which I believe was the plan from the beginning. And it's a plan of every government. It's take control, take power. I mean, that's what a government is. Um, But when it comes to having the reason why I'm against having a government, and that doesn't mean I'm against having you know, I believe in safety. I believe in protection. I believe in the principles of freedom, meaning, you know, if you interfere with somebody else's freedom, then, you know, you're violating, you're aggressing against them. You're violating the principles of freedom. If you go and rob somebody or assault them or kill them or whatever. But if you're, you know, any victimless crimes or any of these things uh, shouldn't exist. And if they didn't, I mean, just drugs alone, and I've, I've said this, would almost put the police out of business. I mean, drugs are like what cancer is to the medical industry. That they they have their budget. And the amount of officers and the amount of work that they do because of drugs is just ridiculous. I mean, cops will probably even tell you that their two biggest things are domestic violence and drugs that they make arrests for. And really, you have statistics to prove it because you look at the arrests, at least in Las Vegas, um, I said this, you know, that that's what they're they're arresting people for mostly misdemeanor bullshit crimes. Seventy five percent of the arrest. So. And why? Why are you arresting people for all this shit? It's just it's it's totally a business. So, well, let's get past what I'm saying about government. So. With government, and I've talked in detail, the bottom line, again, is that you could write exactly what I said, that, okay, and, and of course, all laws are open-ended, but you could make it so fucking specific, and you could write a paragraph, you know, or a couple pages about what you can't do, which would basically be based on the principle of freedom and common law that you can do whatever you want as long as you don't violate somebody else's freedom. And I guarantee you that if you had elected officials and people in power, which would be a government, people that had really the definition, I think, of a government would be and I was going to say this would be uh, I know Larkin Rosa said this some in 
not exactly, but in in, in some sort of uh, fashion. But if somebody has rights that you don't, so once you gave people power, meaning rights that you don't have, it would, it might take a while, but those people would say, well, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need money for this. We need money for that. I mean, you have an example in the Constitution. You can't deny we've done this. Everybody, I mean, you can look at any country. But a lot of them started out with no freedom, so there you go. But you look at the Constitution and how... They don't follow. The Constitution is not followed for the most part. I don't think anything. I mean, maybe the fact that they how the Senate. <laughs> I mean, sorry, the House of Representatives. Um, how they determine how many or something. I mean, or the branches of government. But even things like the Senate used to be elected by the state, and now it's by the people. And there's changes in even the... Because when people think of the Constitution, they mostly think of the amendments. They forget about the rest of it, which kind of sets up the the government. It really doesn't say enough regarding freedom obviously either way if you believe that the constitution protects your freedoms and whatever or it does if it was followed and you know with a few minor adjustments meaning you know it applies to everybody but it doesn't but even if you believe it does, it failed because it's violated all the time. Somehow, police, which I think their very nature is, you could find a, I mean, I guess technically the Constitution doesn't say anything about police. However, depending on what you think of the founding fathers, you could say, well, if they knew what police were going to be like, maybe they would have put stuff in there. They obviously didn't have, they either did or they didn't. They didn't have the foresight to see this or they did and that's what they wanted. And I, I tend to think that you have a couple people that, you know, really believed in freedom and that's about it. And the rest of them, I mean, remember they were a bunch of elites, the majority of people, not even close, you know, 7 million people and what 30 something, you know, pretty much created the government out of 7 million. So, um, when you look at that, I might be off on that number, but it doesn't matter. You can say a hundred. I mean, a hundred out of seven million, you know, is ridiculous. So, my issue with government is you cannot keep it. Uh, you cannot maintain whatever the government is because the people, if you give them power over you, they're going to take more power and no one, I guess, unless you give them consent to have power over you, but if it's coerced or which it pretty much is, or they take more power than you give them, but it, it always works that way it's power corrupts and and that's it and that's it, that's just how it works and like i said you've seen it with the constitution so even if you came up with something that does support freedom it's not going to work anyway 
So that's why, I mean, if somebody can come up with something, fine. And police have basically, you know, any freedoms in the Constitution, they pretty much, you know, trash them. And I know we don't make the laws. We only enforce them and lobby them. Um, but just looking at all these police interactions and the structure of the police department, it's just, it's crazy to me. I I can't comprehend how people can watch a show like Cops, which has been on forever, and I'm sure the majority of the country has seen an episode, and they're fine with that. Because they look at that as, oh, well, that person had drugs on them. They're a bad person. And that's mostly what it is. I mean, there's, they show all the stolen cars, but they uh, also show a lot, which I'm saying to me that obviously that's an actual crime where they steal a car. Um, But they, what, what I'm saying is they show all the stolen cars and where they have drugs, but you know, even today, watching videos where people were being harassed for filming the police station. And they're always wanting, they want your ID. Because what do they want to do? What they do now is every interaction with them, and this is the way everything's going. Just like schools, you know, everything is documented. You have a file and anything that happens is documented. So the police, it's the same thing. Any interaction with them, whether it's just they pull you over and they talk to you, they're documenting and making notes about that interaction. And that's fucked up. And they constantly want to ID everybody for that reason and, of course, to check for warrants. They're out to arrest people. This is a business of filling jails, making arrests, and generating money. And because you've had, you know, police just murdering people, people forget about all of the other stuff that they do. Just how they treat people and the attitudes and the violation of rights where they're just walking up to people asking for IDs, people riding their bikes down the street or walking down the street or in a passenger seat in a car when a car gets pulled over or pulling somebody over for a traffic violation and and always trying to look for something else. Are there drugs in the car? Are there, you know, whatever. And that's kidnapping. Anybody in jail for drugs is kidnapping They're political prisoners because you have the right to possess what you want and put whatever you want, whatever you want, your body. And the propaganda that they put out there, you know, oh, well, you know, they blame it on the people. They try to make the people feel that it's their fault. And and some of them, I think they actually do. They're like, "Uh, this is my my fault. No, it's not. Now, if you steal a car, okay, that's different. But the sentences, the way people are treated, the, I mean, they stole a car. They didn't murder somebody. Now, I don't condone stealing a car. But depending on the circumstances, I don't even know that somebody should go to jail for stealing a car. And I don't believe in the this whole justice system or injustice system that's supposed to be the best in the world that people, I don't know how they would know that. Most of the people that say that have never even been in a fucking courtroom or dealt with police or been arrested or whatever anyway and haven't been to any other countries or know the justice system of any other country. So how the fuck would you know? You're just making statements based on what what you're told by, you know, more propaganda. But, it's all fucked up too. You know, even 
even for murderers and rapists with i i despise i think rapists and pedophiles and and i'm i'm talking about pedophiles now let's make a difference here somebody and i just read this too paul walker uh when he died his girlfriend was 23 he was dating her for seven years she was 16 and he was 33 when they met and i don't I don't I don't necessarily I don't know what she looked like when she was 16 if she like looked like she was 20 or whatever and she probably probably did um of course if that was uh well I was gonna say if it was the other way around nobody would say nothing but nobody said nothing about that neither but um the point being I forgot what my my point was there (laughs) Um, because I started to think about, well, the opposite of that. If a 16-year-old boy was dating a 33-year-old woman, you know, that's fine. But what I was going to say about, you know, uh, oh, pedophiles, like I that's not pedophilia because they're developed pedophiles are guys that are after or girls i guess it seems like there's a lot more you know and maybe this is the media because i haven't done a lot of research about you know statistically how much you know whatever um if it's more boys or more girls or whatever, but it just, the ones you hear about, you hear more about guys molesting little boys, which is the, it's, and and I I don't know, I, I can't speak to this, but it would seem like that would be the most damaging form of pedophilia. Not that girls aren't, wouldn't be damaged neither that I'm sure they would. But then I know that with guys, they would, when they get older, start to question their sexuality and things like that and whatever, especially if they were, you know, older, like 10 or 11 and they didn't stop, stop it. They, you know, um, for whatever reason, cause they were scared or, you know, they were threatened or, or whatever, but there's a difference meaning that you know like r kelly and michael jackson assuming that they both did what they said they did now r kelly was having sex with teenage girls that looked like they were adults they were fully developed and had breasts and whatever i don't want to get detailed but you know that could pass for you know 20 year olds Michael Jackson, assuming he was guilty, and maybe he wasn't, but was having sex with little boys, prepubescent. And there's a huge fucking difference, okay? So I just want to make that clear as well. um, Because I think, and Seinfeld did this fucking shit too, and he was 40, he dated a 16-year-old. But I don't, I don't look at him as a pedophile. Fucking 16 and 18 is two years. A 16-year-old can easily look like, you know, an 18-year-old or a 21-year-old or whatever. Of course, they can easily look like a fucking 12-year-old too. And if they do, that might be a little, you know, that might be a little creepy. But it's more based on their development, to be honest, than anything. Um But I don't know how you'd have a relationship. Um, I think when I was, what, 34, I had a date with a girl that was like 21. And it was just like like one date. Because I I couldn't relate to them. Now I said how old I was. So I, I couldn't, you know, even though I was 29... I dated a girl that was 20 
and you know she was immature to me so it you know i i don't know how you 33 and 16 and 40 and 16 as far as mentally it's just i don't know but as far as like physically i don't you know assuming that they're fully developed which i assume at 16 they would be i i don't you know, 18 is just an arbitrary age as far as I'm concerned. But, um, but going back to police, um, you know, the whole structure of the system is so fucked up and it is so anti-freedom and it is set up solely to put people in jail, to get money for the state or county or, you know, the federal government in certain circumstances, um, you know, when it comes to the DEA. When you look at how they treat people and... what the purpose is based on what they're doing that's where i come to the conclusion that one you n- there nobody should exist that has more power than you everybody should be equal when it comes to power there should be no And I mean that in a, yeah, if somebody has more money, you could say, well, they have more power. But but I mean, as far as government goes. And again, I don't believe in government for those reasons. But it's not just that. If you're even looking at, if you're somebody who believes in government, I don't know how you can support the police based on their whole structure, their setup, their, if they were a company, their mission statement, and all of that. Because it is fucking nuts. It makes no sense. Everyone's been indoctrinated to think what they're doing is right, and it is just, and it is a great system. And that is insane. So I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about that system. And 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 that's probably all we're going to do for uh, today. So if you'd like to call in, if we even have any live listeners, <laughs> uh, 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-664. Or Skype, uh, nonpartisan liberty for all is the username. Just send a request, or you can um, check us out at our website. Send an email, or go into the chat room and ask a question. Or, but definitely check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all dot com, where there's more than just uh, information. There, there's also a whole bunch of original articles, well, articles slash blogs. There's one I did on drugs. There's the uh, links to all the social media. There's my uh, Declaration of Independence 2, which I spent a lot of time writing. And unfortunately, uh, not a lot of people spent a, a lot of time reading, which was very disappointing. But uh, we'll be back right after this to talk more about the police and the whole system and and how it works so we'll be back after this nonpartisan liberty for all dot com
When should you shoot a cop? That question, even without an answer, makes most law-abiding taxpayers go into knee-jerk conniptions. The indoctrinated masses all race to see who can be first and loudest to proclaim that it is never okay to forcibly resist law enforcement. In doing so, they also inadvertently demonstrate why so much of human history has been plagued by tyranny and oppression. In an ideal world, cops would do nothing except protect people from thieves and attackers, in which case shooting a cop would never be justified. In the real world, however, far more injustice, violence, torture, theft, and outright murder has been committed in the name of law enforcement than has been committed in spite of it. To get a little perspective, try watching a documentary or two about some of the atrocities committed by the regimes of Stalin or Lenin or Chairman Mao, or Hitler, or Pol Pot, or any number of other tyrants in history. Pause the film when the jackboots are just about to herd innocent people into the cattle cars, or just about to gun them down as they stand on the edge of a ditch, and then ask yourself the question, when should you shoot a cop? Keep in mind the evils of those regimes were committed in the name of law. And as much as the statement may make people cringe, the history of the human race would have been a lot less gruesome if there had been a lot more cop killers around to deal with the state mercenaries of those regimes. Now, people don't mind when you point out the tyranny that has happened in other countries, but most have a hard time viewing their own country, their own government, and their own law enforcers in any sort of objective way. Having been trained to feel a blind loyalty to the ruling class, of the particular piece of dirt they live on, also known as patriotism, and having been trained to believe that obedience is a virtue, the idea of forcibly resisting law enforcement is simply unthinkable to many. Literally, they can't even think about it. And humanity has suffered horribly because of it. It is a testament to the effectiveness of authoritarian indoctrination that literally billions of people throughout history have begged and screamed and cried in the face of authoritarian injustice and oppression, but only a tiny fraction have ever actually lifted a finger to try to stop it. Even when people can recognize tyranny and oppression, they still usually talk about working within the system, the same system that's responsible for the tyranny and the oppression. People want to believe that the system will, sooner or later, provide justice. The last thing they want to consider is that they should illegally resist. That if they want to achieve justice, they must become criminals and terrorists, which is what anyone who resists legal injustice is automatically labeled. But history shows all too well that those who fight for freedom and justice almost always do so illegally, i.e. without the permission of the ruling class. If politicians think that they have the right to impose any law they want, and cops have the attitude that as long as it's called law they will enforce it, what is there to prevent complete tyranny? Not the consciences of the lawmakers or their hired thugs, obviously, and not any election or petition to the politicians. When tyrants define what counts as law, then by definition, it is up to the lawbreakers to combat tyranny. Pick any example of abuse of power, whether it's the fascist so-called war on drugs, the police thuggery that has become so common, the random stops and searches now routinely carried out in the name of security, such as at airports, border checkpoints that aren't even at the border, sobriety checkpoints, and so on, or any other example. Now, ask yourself the uncomfortable question. If it's wrong for cops to do these things, doesn't that imply that the people have a right to resist such actions? And of course, state mercenaries don't take kindly to being resisted, even nonviolently. If you question their right to detain you, interrogate you, search you, invade your home, and so on, you are very likely to be tasered, physically assaulted, kidnapped, put in a cage, or shot. If a cop decides to treat you like livestock, whether he does it legally or not, 
you will usually have only two options, submit or kill the cop. You can't resist a cop just a little and get away with it. He will always call in more of his fellow gang members until you are subdued or dead. Basic logic dictates that you either have an obligation to let law enforcers have their way with you, or you have the right to stop them from doing so, which will almost always require killing them. Politely asking fascists to not be fascist has a very poor track record throughout history. Consider the recent Indiana Supreme Court ruling, which declared that if a cop tries to illegally enter your home, it's against the law for you to do anything to stop him. Aside from the patent absurdity of it, since it amounts to giving thugs with badges permission to break the law and makes it a crime for you to defend yourself against a criminal, if he has a badge, consider the logical ramifications of that attitude. There were once some words written on a piece of parchment, those words now known as the Fourth Amendment, that said that you have the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures at the hands of government agents. In Indiana today, what could that possibly mean? The message from the ruling class is quite clear and utterly insane. It amounts to this. We don't have the right to invade your home without probable cause, but if we do, you have no right to stop us and we have the right to arrest you if you try. Why not apply that to the rest of the Bill of Rights while we're at it? You have the right to say what you want, but if we use violence to shut you up, you have to let us. I can personally attest to the fact that that is the attitude of the U.S. so-called Department of Justice. Or maybe you have the right to have guns, but if we try to forcibly and illegally disarm you and you resist, we have the right to kill you. Ask Randy Weaver or the Branch Davidians about that one. You have the right to not testify against yourself, but when we coerce you into confessing and call it a plea agreement, you can't do a thing about it. What good is a right? What does the term right even mean if you have an obligation to allow jackboots to violate your so-called rights? It makes the term absolutely meaningless. To be blunt, if you have the right to do A, it means that if someone tries to stop you from doing A, even if he has a badge and a politician scribble, sometimes called law, on his side, you have the right to use whatever amount of force is necessary to resist that person. That's what it means to have an unalienable right. If you have the unalienable right to speak your mind, a la the First Amendment, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to shut you up. If you have the unalienable right to be armed, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to disarm you. If you have the right to not be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to inflict those upon you. Those who are proud to be law-abiding don't like to hear this and don't like to think about this, but what's the alternative? If you do not have the right to forcibly resist so-called legal injustice, that logically implies that you have an obligation to allow government agents to do absolutely anything they want to you, your home, your family, your neighbors. Hello, who hey, is it? Huh? Uh, hello. Can you turn that off? No, I can't. Okay, I said turn it off. No. Yes. Yes. Turn it off. Do you I have a warrant? Do you, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We have a baby here. Myself, okay, okay, let me explain okay. yourself. I'm sure it's the sheriff's department. We're looking for a wanted felon. Okay, he's not okay. here. He's not turn here. Turn that off because I don't know what it is. It's a cell phone. Okay, you don't see put it, it in my face. Don't put it in my hold face. What's your Okay. Need I don't have to tell you that. Do you have a warrant? Okay. First of all, I need sure. three types of ID. Okay. Explain who you are because you could be anybody dressed up in a uniform. Really? By the Supreme Court, yes. You you want to play games? I'm not playing yeah. games. I'm going to drag you out if you... If you st- That's why I'm recording okay. this. Straight to you. Now, this... I, I've played this a bunch of times. I, I love this clip. And um, it's a YouTube video where this is the audio where a guy films, which you should always... Any encounter with the police, film it. Um... You don't have to necessarily post it on YouTube. You can if you want to. There are so many that I think people get the point. But if it's something that is 
either can help people or something that shows, you know, how the police are. I mean, um, there's probably everything. I mean, whatever. If you want to post, uh, post it, post it. If not, don't. But definitely film it for your own safety and probably live. You, I mean, you probably should live stream it on like Bamboozer or something like that. To, even if um, people aren't going to see it that way as a backup in case they try to take your fucking you know phone away. And now they're using the that could be a weapon. And I know that I this this will end up as a false flag. I guarantee you that somebody will will make a phone gun and fucking shoot somebody that way. And then cops will uh, stop people from using phones uh, to film them. So this fuck because that's what the cop says. And he tells him to stop filming and he tells him to put it down. He's like, no. You know, this is my house. And I think if he didn't have a baby and his wife wasn't there, uh, it would have went a little different. But I've talked about this before, how the guy goes, well, I'm going to, you know, oh, you you won't play games. I'm going to drag you out your house. Uh, so because they're looking for a, a felon, you know, uh, a wanted felon, it's OK to violate your rights. You know, if it, I, I guess if it was a wanted misdemeanor, then it wouldn't be. Um you know, it's always, well, because of this, you could be a terrorist. That's what I watched a bunch uh, or, or I listened to a bunch of videos today. And it was all fucking, you know, shit like that. There were people filming police stations. and Or you could be a terrorist. Or you could have a bunch. Somebody got pulled over. You could have a bomb in your car. I'm trying to keep people safe. And basically saying that you know oh so anybody could so you're randomly going to search everybody type thing or you're randomly going to just id everybody i mean it's getting this is not a fucking yes black people are targeted more in black communities we know that it's just but this is not that's not the main issue i'm i'm sorry it, it, it's it's not it's living in a police state and everybody's rights being protected you know i'm just as much of course for black people being protected as i am hispanic people or white people or whatever but when it's made about race it takes the focus off of the police and that's what happened. And that's what bothers me so much. First of all, black lives matter got a whole bunch of money from, you know, progressive and democratic operatives and their agenda is all about fucking socialism and whatever. And they're, they're just a front for fucking socialist organizations. They don't give a fuck about the police and whatever. They're just bunch bullshit and they have nothing to do with the black people in general. They're, you know, whatever. But in in general, the I talked about how one side kept the, you know, conversation, both sides kept the conversation going and made it about race. It wasn't just the Black Lives Matter progressive side. Then you had the uh, conservatives or whatever on the other fucking stupid government station, which they planned all this out you know go back and forth and make it about that and just talk about race and and forget about the fact that police are out of control not just in killing people not just i mean that's a very small percentage of if you look at police encounters not that i'm defending them because they're, if you kill over a thousand people your fucking government you know even if that's one one uh, percent or less than one percent of the encounters that's still a fucking problem man that's not like other things that's not like regular people you're talking about the government killing people so um yes the and i've seen videos where they do this where i know that yeah they're looking at this guy because if he wasn't black and he wasn't dressed the way he was then you know they wouldn't be treating him like he, he they were i i see that you know that happens i've talked about my history with um the people i've been friends with and whatever and yeah that that happens uh especially in uh black neighborhoods because they are in general 
you know, a lot of black neighborhoods are more low income um, neighborhoods and they believe, OK, these people don't know their rights and and they're they can't afford a lawyer and whatever. And we'll just get convictions out of it. We'll get arrests out of it. So, you know, every black person is a criminal. Yeah, I know. But. To me, you get rid of the police altogether. You don't have them abusing black people. You don't have them abusing anybody. So that's the whole thing. And I, I don't know how I got from that from here. But um, so this guy basically, you know, he knows his rights. He tells the police fucking, you know, they try to ID him. They want his ID so bad. And they, I mean, they could find out who he is. They just find out who lives in that apartment later, I guess, if they want to. But oh let us search your house let us do this and you see how how put this is what police do this is a perfect example and we'll and we'll talk a, a little about it. i don't have a lot of time left but um that's what police do and that's part of the system that's part of what they're trained to do so i'm, I'm going to play the rest of this it's real quick and then we'll come back and um talk about the uh system is there anybody else in the house ma'am? no there's nobody else in the house there's me and my family that's it Okay, let me explain it to you, okay? We got a female in the apartment complex, just got beat up by her parolee at large boyfriend. I right? watched the whole thing. You did? Yes. Okay. Then why window. don't you help us and step out and tell us what's going on? I seen the dude walk off. I seen him I heard him arguing. Do you know I, him? No, I don't. I okay, see him. Told- see, of course, step out. They want to get him out of the house. So you guys okay. are friends with him? No, I see him in my he, I, okay. he's so my you neighbor. Have an ID? As far as that. No, I don't have to describe that to you. Do you have a warrant? Or do you suspect me of committing a crime? I don't. You could be harboring a fugitive. I'm you not harboring a fugitive. All I know. I'm not. Picture of, there's nobody in here. If you want to check, please go get a warrant. There's nobody else in here. Sir, just show us ID, and then we'll make if sure you're, you're not, not him. him. I'm not him. Like. I'm not him. Okay. We don't know what he looks like. Okay. Okay. Show us your ID, okay. guy. She'll explain to, know, to you what he, you what he looks you like. Describe what he looks like. Okay. Okay. She didn't describe what he looks like. I don't have to describe my ID. Okay, grab your ID. You like, have you, still not performed me three fourths ID. I don't know what. I don't know what you. Been okay, watching. by the Supreme Court, it's not what I've been okay. watching. It's the law. And right now, you guys are in violation of color and law. Okay. Because you are at my door with guns, and I have failed for my life. It's all I have not committed no crime. This is this is law. I have right not now, committed a crime. We're suspecting a and you're harming okay. a fugitive. No, I am not harming right, a fugitive. Okay. Because you have no you evidence, video or audio of me having a fugitive. You are going off words. Okay. That's why we're here to check it out. Okay. okay. There is no fugitive. Okay. We're all neighbors here. You need to knock on everybody's door. Okay. Not if they said they came here. Okay. No, they didn't why come here. Okay. okay. Why would she say he came here? I don't know. You he didn't us. come here. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. So you we're all neighbors. Walk away. Cop is probably lying when he's say, saying that, that, that he came there. He walked away. He walked up. To the back. Straight to the back. I don't know but what's going on in the back. Out. There's you, another you subject. Okay. What's going on? And, and you have that, too. The cops are always worried about your hands. They're holding fucking guns. They got guns right there. A lot of times they're pointing fucking guns at you. They have tasers. They have batons. They have all this shit. It's about their safety. What about our fucking safety? We're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting beat up. Nobody knows how many people get beat up by the cops or get abused or get thrown around like I did and had huge bruises all over me. You know, nobody knows and nobody really fucking cares. What's going on? I just told you. What I seen, Can we that's check it. your house? Get a warrant. Would you allow us to check your house? Get a warrant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Close the door. Playing no fucking games in this motherfucker. If you've looked around the streets of your own hometown and maybe you've seen stuff that looks like it came out of a war zone. Promoting the ideas of true freedom and liberty, nonpartisan liberty for all radio with Dave Bourne. Nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. Please check us out there. So uh, briefly. And and then I'll end the show. I, I want to talk about really how the system works, at least at the police police's end including you know the the training i mean the training is ridiculous you know 
I don't even know how to explain what I feel when I watch these videos. And I'm talking about even on cops where they're, you know, approving these videos and and putting them out there in the public and saying this is what we're doing. I mean, they are it it I I can't I I don't even know I'm almost speechless because it's like They're all about get, making an arrest, trying to find out as much information as they can. A lot of people don't know that they don't have to answer any questions. And so many people or consent to any searches. Now, because of the Supreme Court being bullshit, you know, everything's rubber stamp now and everything's about, you know, political and about power and control and all of that. And it, it pretty much, I think, always was. But, you know, so a warrant doesn't mean anything neither. But as far as even Supreme Court decisions, a lot of them don't mean much. Where they can use a fucking dog and they'll just fake that a dog hit on your car. If they, uh, for one or, or two reasons, if they think you have drugs or you don't, but they just want to fuck with you and keep you there longer and, you know, toss up your car and shit. So, I mean, the whole dog thing, they should not be allowed to search your car with a dog. They should not be allowed to search your car fucking period. If they're pulling you over for a traffic violation, why are they allowed to pull you out the car and search you, which they do all the time, search your car? Now, a lot of times... They're technically not, but they'll just do it anyway, and they get away with it. Like, I had a cop ask permission to search me, and I said no. And he was like, well, I'm going to search you anyway. So these people don't know, or they feel pressure, or they're coerced into saying yes. I mean, a lot of times they'll ask them, but then they'll do it anyway. But they'll say, you know, oh, can I search your car? Oh, if you ain't got nothing to hide. That's why you just say to them, you don't want to go back and forth. It's just... Um, you just tell them that you're, you exercise, you're exercising your right to not answer any questions because they don't tell you when they start talking to you that anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. They say that when they arrest you, but really anything you say will be used against you potentially in a court of law. Cause I guess if you don't get, uh, arrested it won't be used against you in a court because you're not going to court but anything you say will be used against you and it might be used to arrest you and don't fall for that bullshit that and they try to do this on tv they try to convince people well if you're honest you know we'll give you a deal and occasionally they'll do that on cops and they do it for that reason but it has to be something like not serious and usually they just won't arrest them. They'll give them a citation. The other thing that they're allowed to do is this stacking of charges. So they'll arrest you for one incident and you'll have like five charges. And each charge will carry, you know, a certain amount of years. I think it's 90% of cases are they plead out. Once you get arrested, you've lost. Unless you're able to sue the police, which very few people are, unless, uh, you know, wrongful death usually is the only thing I see or somebody seriously beaten. There's not a lot of lawsuits where people aren't getting killed or seriously beaten by the police, where people actually get money that I'm aware of. Now, I I could be wrong, but I seriously doubt it. Because even, um, you know, when you call internal affairs, it's like, it's not even worth it. But I guess you don't have to call internal affairs and file a complaint. You could just go and file a lawsuit and say, fuck, you know, skip over that part of it. But, which would probably be a better idea. 
But they stack the charges, so once you get arrested, you're fucked anyway because y- your time, you got to bail yourself out and spend time in jail and whatever. And I love that we'll, we'll figure it out in the courts. You know, oh, you can you can go figure that out in the courts. They don't realize once they arrest you. I, actually, they do, and that's why they do it. So the whole their whole goal and their whole mission statement is fucked up from the beginning. Now that's if you believe in the police. That's why they, there is no reason to have police. And, and I'll tell you why, because they always arrive after the fact, which in a sense they should, they shouldn't be. And now they're trying to do this cop even said, I, w- I should have kept the clip. I mean, that they're trying to prevent crime. And that's very dangerous because if they're trying to prevent crime by pulling people over and searching them and violating their rights, that's very dangerous. And that's what they're doing now. They're quote unquote trying to prevent crime. <laughs> Even though the CIA and all these government agencies are actually committing crimes. Like, bringing drugs in and selling drugs to support their agency and shit like that. But um, they they don't prevent crime. The only way they really prevent crime is if you were going to, you know, commit a crime and you saw a police car there and you probably wouldn't, you know. But see, you don't. If they could do that and just leave people alone unless they actually witnessed somebody committing a crime. But no, they're going to if they sit anywhere watching people, they're going to be harassing people, people that are just walking down the street minding their own business. They're gonna, so you don't want that anyway. Well, some people do because they don't care about people's rights, but they are you know, what it seems like is the most fascist organization in the world when it comes to policing. Because it doesn't seem like the same thing goes on in most other countries with the police. A lot of them, you can fucking pay them off. But everything is so serious. Everything is... You know, you have drugs. Oh, my God. It's like the end of the world. There's no way they could just let you go. I've never seen. Now, that doesn't mean this hasn't happened. But I've never seen somebody just let them go when they had drugs on them. I've seen them give them a citation instead of arresting them. But you still got to go to court. And an officer yesterday on cops actually said, well, it wasn't from yesterday's show, but when I was watching it yesterday, actually said it's the same thing because he questioned the guy. He said, why didn't, or a girl, or somebody, why, why didn't you say you were arrested for this? And he's like, well, I wasn't arrested. I got a, you know, uh, ticket, whatever, to appear in court. He's like, yeah, that's an arrest. So they, you know, they just, it is better to get, you know, a piece of paper than have to go through that whole process. But then why don't they do that anyway? And one of the reasons, of course, is they want to fill the jails. They need all your information. You'll have to bail yourself out, all of this shit. And they're not thinking of the best interest of the public. They're thinking of the best interest of them, their agenda, their mission statement, what they're trying to accomplish. They want arrests. They want money. They want uh, drugs, guns, whatever. I mean, I'm not saying they want them for their own use, but... They don't give a fuck about the person. They don't care about the people and what happens to them in their life. They think, you know, they make fucking ignorant statements like, you know, they'll arrest somebody for drugs and say how, you know, 
like it's better for oh this is best thing that could have happened to them or this is you know you don't know anything about them there you don't know anything about drugs cops don't even know anything about drugs uh, again i talked uh, about dr carl hart and you should look at some of his uh research or uh watch some of his videos on youtube you know cops don't know shit about drugs anyway how would they from being a cop how would you know the effects of drugs how would you know oh because i arrested some people that were out of it or that were drug addicts or whatever yeah so it you arrest there are drug addicts it's a small percentage there are plenty of functional drug users as well and they're not looking for what's in they're not public servants even though they're supposed to be but they're not there for the people they're not there to help you you know there's been so many people that have called the police because of a loved one or friend or whatever that is threatening to kill themselves or something like that. And, yeah, you call the police and then they'll come down and do it for you. I mean, they're not there for any of that. I have a quote from a cop from cops that's how arrogant they are they just act like assholes um and they just don't care but that oh well if you know the person we just react to the person if the person gives us an attitude we give them one no you're you're public servants you're supposed to fucking you know if i if i go into a business and i'm mad about something they're not supposed to start giving me a fucking attitude. And really, that's what the cop the cops are supposed to be there to help people and to well, I mean, that's what really, you know, to protect people, what people think they're supposed to be there for. But their real job is just to fill the jails, to arrest people, to teach people um discipline and scare them to teach them that you know you must be obedient you must uh obey my commands i mean it's it is ridiculous but at the same time it's it's people see this stuff and they're like well they had drugs so whatever so they deserve to be treated like that so what is the point of the police there isn't one because really if you look at protection and safety you do not need a government agency to provide that and i'm all for safety and protection the police not only do you not need the police to do that, they don't do that. That's not their priority. They're worried about themselves going home. I mean, they're sitting there putting guns to people's heads, pulling guns out like they're not nothing, pointing them at people like they're nothing. You don't point a fucking gun with a bullet in the chamber, safety off at somebody like it's nothing. But they do that. Because they're ready to kill somebody like, you know, like that. Because they don't give a fuck. It's justifiable. Hey, they felt threatened. Of course, the other thing is self-defense. And this thing that cops can do whatever they want that they have special rights that you don't have and you cannot defend yourself against them for violating your rights or you'll go to jail or they'll kill you because not because they have any real authority. The government doesn't have any real authority. It's because they have a gang that they can call that is more well-funded than you are 
because they've extorted all this money from the people. And, you know, who's going to build their own fucking army anyway, uh, even if you could afford it? To defend yourself against police violating your rights. But police, I mean, they are kidnappers. They are a criminal fucking gang. They treat people like shit. Because most of the people should not be going to jail, you know, for... I mean, they're pulling people over, mostly for drugs. Pulling people over on bikes. Then just arresting people for running. Evading is their their crime. And that's it. Or they have uh, drugs on them. Or... Uh, I mean, that's most of the fucking arrests that they do. Or, you know, most of them are, they pull people over and harass them and they don't have anything. And then if you know your rights, then they get really mad. Then they'll, you know, get out the car. So they want to use the fact that you're defending your rights, which you should, because if everybody did, it'd make it a lot harder for them and it changed a lot of things because they know that they'd have to change how they act if they want anybody to fucking talk to them i think you know basically i have banned all police and what i mean by that is i will not talk to police i will not call the police um unless i have to to report uh Something like an insurance thing or something like that. Because really, what the fuck would a cop do for me? Seriously. If I'm home, I can defend myself. If I'm not home and my fiance's home, she can defend herself. The same way I can defend myself. We won't get into details. Well, I mean, it's illegal. We have guns. Um, so I don't need the police if somebody breaks in my house. If if somebody breaks in my house when I'm not home, what the fuck are the police going to do? They're going to get my shit back? I seriously fucking doubt it. I've heard so many stories where they don't even really give a fuck because they're like, well, that's a case that we're going to waste a bunch of time and for no reason. And what the fuck, what are we getting out of it? They don't want to do, you know, that kind of investigation cars. They do because when they find stolen cars, usually not usually, but a lot of times I'll find people with drugs and you know, all this other shit. And they're like, yeah, and it's easy for them. And it, they, they talk about it, you know, the adrenaline, and then they can pull somebody over in a stolen car, and and they do the whole big thing where they have, like, ten cops there, and they're like, walk, get out and walk backwards with your hands up, and, you know, that whole fucking big thing. So they love that. Same thing. It, the, only, the only thing maybe they could help it, it, if I, if somebody stole my car. So what? They find my car. Oh, thank you. Well, if you don't find my car, my insurance company is going to fucking give me the money anyway. And it's probably going to be fucked up if you find it. So really, you know, and the only reason that you can find my fucking car is, again, you extort people and have this big budget and have a whole big gang uh, that drives around that has all this information by violating people's rights and things like that. And, you know, it's easier for you to find it. So what the fuck can you do for me except after the fact arrest somebody so, oh, they get punished and go to jail? And what does that even do for me? They go to jail. I mean, okay, if they did something really bad, I mean, you know, murdered a 
loved one or something. Well, if there were no police, you know, and they murdered one of my loved ones, then I just go and fucking kill them. Of course, because there are police, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, there's nothing that police can do for me. I don't need you. And I love how they say, you know, oh, if we weren't here, you know, tomorrow. I got a fucking, you know, I shouldn't say this on air, but it's legal. You know, I got a fucking AR-15, okay? What the fuck do I need the police for? Seriously. Like, if people were rioting and started looting and came to my house and tried to, you know, kill me or something. I, I think I think I'll be okay. Thank you. Thank you though. So you know and, and, and honestly I wish that I could convince some of these police because I I, I don't you know I hate the institution and the gang that they're part of. I, I don't know that I hate them personally. Or I, I mean, I don't even hate, because I, I don't really have hate. It's hard to hate something. But I hate what they can do to people's lives, whether it's mine or somebody else's. It's crazy. But I don't personally hate them. I'm against what they're doing. And I wish I could even talk to them and, and and get them to really understand, like, look at what you're doing. You can't understand the drug war is a failure. You can't understand that somebody has a right to put what they want in your body and you're not helping them. No one's going to, first of all, plenty of people that do drugs don't have issues with it. They have issues with it because it's illegal. If it was legal, there wouldn't be a problem. The people that do have issues with drugs, and that would be, you know, it affects their life in a negative way. If they don't want help, they're not going to get help. That's just how it is. Um, I have so much more to to, uh, talk about regarding this in the courts and, and whatever, so... Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about police because we didn't for a while. Um, because I talked about them so much and then, you know, I didn't for a while. And, and now I think that there's nobody talking about them again, at least in, you know, government media, uh, did the damage that they did between, you know, the progressives and conservatives turning it into just a racial issue, not a uh, cops have too much power, cops, uh, you know, are trained. It's not just, tra- they want to say training, and training is probably part of it, but you have to, it's, well, I I think you have to get rid of them because it doesn't matter. You can't have an organization that has the power that they have. They can't have more power than the reg- than the average person. They can't. And that's and then they're not po- because if they don't, then they're not police. And then you just have the same thing. You have security, private sector um, people that are actually there to protect you, and and that's it. And they don't care about the stupid stuff like the police do. Because the police are about promotions and money and uh, arrests and filling jails and all of that that stuff. So, so we'll be talking more about that. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see about the rest of the week and how the schedule is going to go. You can find the events on my official YouTube page, uh, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. So if you follow that page uh you will see the events in every show i create an event so um also 
you can go to Spreaker.com and automatically uh, sign up to get the show uh, delivered to you. So you can do that as well. For some reason, what it's called is, uh, what do you call it? It's, um, I can't think right now what <laughs> the fucking, um, when you get a podcast automatically delivered to you or whatever. So, but, um, we're still here and we're not going anywhere. Um, just need to work out the schedule and definitely, uh, figure out a new strategy, I think for the show and how to get the information across and how to better promote the show and, and, and to take the time to, uh, put that time in to do that. And it's hard with just me working on the show. So, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate it as always. And we will be back soon. So thanks everybody. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop.